Blog Talk Radio. Loudmouth Radio Network. You are live on the air with us, broadcasting live. It's a beautiful night on Tuesday night, March 4th, 2014. We're thoroughly excited to be on air for the new season of Loudmouth Radio. Mm-hmm. I think that it's been well, well ready to get this uh, actual week going. What you say, Jazzy? I think we are over well, well ready. We have gone through the fire. Oh, no, I was going to sing. Never mind, never mind. We have just really been doing (laughs) (laughs) some wonderful and crazy, exciting, moving, moving, running, running, busy shows since the last summer for our special editions and drop-in-the-bucket kind of shows. And you know what? To be back in our new season, new shows, new co-hosts, and just excitement, yeah. I think we're pretty pretty much ready. I think I think you have a point. And for all of those who may be listening for the first time, you are on live on Live Mouth Radio with host Sunny and Jazzy, um, which we are so excited to also introduce a special series to the network this this beautiful spring season, uh, with a legal voice with Valerie Val, who you'll hear tomorrow night. Um, at the same Did you really time, say spring season and it's freezing. And it's, it's the, our spring um, season. Unfortunately, yeah, the weather okay. has not stayed consistent. We were sixty seventy <laughs> on Sunday. Today we're like forty five fifty people. Let I don't know you. what's happening. Let me tell you, I saw a girl <laughs> out. She had on these really short shorts and flip flops on Sunday, and it was so cute. And today mm-hmm. I am outside. We were doing some running around before the show started. And I'm telling you, you, all of you know, and those that are joining us for the first time, I'm a very beautiful, most exotically beautiful bald head woman. Yes, I said it. And so <laughs> being out in this cold from 70-degree weather just a few days, oh, my God, I'm freezing, freezing. I had, I didn't have a hat or a scarf with me, which is very unrare. Uh, I mean, no, no, very right. rare. And uh, so I was outside. I had a coat in the car, so I grabbed it and tied it around my head. Let me just tell you, I got some looks as I drove by. Just want you to know. Uh, they might have just been wondering what was behind the wrappings, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I think, guys, it's so important to know that, unfortunately, our ozone is, like, corrupted now. So there's never yeah, it really um, is. a safe space because it's what's amazing Um you know, I really didn't formally introduce this new segment, which we're starting something a little different this season for the new shows, um, our new show lineup, and our pre-show, which is called What's On Your Mind, Atlanta. For those who are listening to Live Mouth Radio, we're based out of Metro Atlanta. Um, majority of our listening audience has spread it out from local to regional to, to national to global. So we have listeners from everywhere. Um, but, you know, with us being a, a local market, um, in Atlanta, which is a large population of people, over 6 million people, encompass Metro Atlanta. It was very important for us um, to, to also try to um, have a balance of uh, shows that, that cater to so many subject matters. I think, Jazz, it's safe to say we really hone in on things that are really close to our heart or that is influenced mm-hmm. or affects us. Um, we also try to be a listening ear to what's going on in our communities, 
uh, what's going on nationally, what's going on globally. So we, we keep it all intermingled in the aspect of trying to touch on all of those things. Um, but at the same time, I, I said this year I wanted us to really, as a producer, uh, have a segment that allowed us to kind of talk um, and open up a forum for uh, Atlanta uh, to, to speak on things. So yeah, if you are so alive, people, you need to yeah. call in, call in, call in and tell us what's on your mind, um, 347-826-7520. Almost gave you my phone number, but, you know, we could talk and we can chat, but it wouldn't go on the radio. So if you're listening Make sure it's uh, 347-826-7520. Call us and tell us what's on your mind. See how I just jumped over and talked right over you? I love it. I got to do it for a while. Well, that's how we do. You know, we, we, we <laughs> get that to each other back and forth, and it's just a matter of, you know, how we how we decide to do it. But <laughs> um, I, I think that, you know, there's been so many things that have been going on as of oh lately. Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah. Um, I know for us in our camp, we've been it's been real hectic, and uh, but it's been a good hectic. We're, we're growing in so many areas and directions, um, so we try to do our best to try to keep our foot on the ground um, when it comes to um, you know dealing with community affairs and personal affairs and business affairs. So we sure that a lot of you guys that have um, today's Tuesday, so we're not necessarily at the very first day of the week. Um, but we are still in the beginning of what most consider to be the start of their week. So for us, I, I think, Jazz, you can tell me if you feel the same way, but so I have now become um, unaffected by what day it really is. On one side, <laughs> it's like I, I, can't, I can't really make a division between weekend, the midweek. Yeah, the, the, it, you no, know, we the, don't have it, that. It doesn't have a filter now, right? <laughs> Not at all. Let me tell you, Loudmouth Radio Network, we're everywhere. We have become the official um, radio network that's like, where's Waldo? I mean, seriously. <laughs> we pop Not up. where's Waldo. I'm serious. Somebody said that to me, like, oh, my God, I see y'all everywhere. And it's just like, hello, there's Waldo again. Because, honestly, we have such great opportunities. And if we don't have the greatest opportunities. Trust me when I tell you people, we will pop up and crash an opportunity. That's just how we right. get it in. <laughs> yeah, so I think we officially have some crashes for real. We are the official crashers, just so you know. Um, we've crashed parades. We've crashed parties. We've crashed hotels. We've crashed restaurants. Um so we're yeah. not biased. Now, we haven't figured that now out. Yet. We, yeah, for real. Now we just, and, and let me tell you, we don't discriminate on the crashing because we've, we've crashed, you know, other cultures and yeah, color we lines, mind. sexualities. We've crashed it. So that's what we do over here because we want to make sure we either get you the greatest uh, press conferences or the greatest stories, or the greatest sounds. We just really want to bring you what's going on around in our community and in our city. But we also, like uh, Sunny said, our producer said, we definitely want to bring you what's going on in around the community as well as global. We've picked up several people have contacted us from Canada. We have some people over mm -hmm. in Europe. Um, and, you know, to be just, as my mother would say, well, it's just little old me. It's little old us. And I don't mean O like O L D, just O, you know, O L E with the little hyphen, with the little hyphen. But I'm just saying, it's just, it's such a blessing, and that's the way we count it. It's such a blessing when we started out with an idea, with a vision that our producer had. Each host had the same vision, and we were all drawn to to her vision, and we were able to come on, get our shows, do our lineups, and to create a following has just been amazing. I don't think many of you know, but we started out the first month we had over mm -hmm. 10,000 listeners, and that was the first show that um, Sonny and JL at the time, JL King, had the first shows together, and it was Night Talk Live with JL and Sonny. It was amazing. They did a phenomenal yes. job in that first, first month out, over 10,000 listeners. And so we've just grown, 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 and then to be able to be picked up on Stitcher Radio, for those of you that don't have that app on your phones or your iPads or in your car dashes, it's stitcherradio.com. They have picked us up. 
picked us up last year. We were jumping around and all excited because that helps us to reach the masses. So anytime four million just, plus, yeah, four million plus in Kardashians and what? What's the new car, Sunny? That that are now well, bringing in. Well, what, what's happened is you know, especially a lot of your high end. Uh, car makers have um, automatically installed dashboards that have the interactive app abilities. So um, we're not now limited to only having, like, access. So remember, like, most people would have Sirius Radio, right. um, which was only, you know, a, a, a available to subscribers. Or, like, if you bought a brand-new car, nine times out of ten, they'll give you maybe uh, a month to, to 60 days of serious radio so you can actually have satellite radio in your car. Well, what's happened now, you know, the car makers have to adapt to what has happened with technology. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. most cars like Toyota, um, Lexus, uh, Land Rover, Mercedes, Jaguar, um, BMW, um, Volvo, they've all installed the in-car dashboard systems where you can actually sync into a lot of your apps. So we're fortunate as a radio network, um, you can download the app on your iPhone, your Android phone, in your car. Uh, you can actually, you know, if you have a tablet, and you can actually um, right. favor us as a network, as, a, as a, a radio station that you frequently would like to get um, streamed to your phone. It will automatically feed and update. Um, and then, of course, we're online at loudmouthradio.com. And always remember to put two Ds in loudmouth. If you don't see that big old red and white and black mouth, that ain't us. <laughs> it's not us. It's uh, not us. It's no, a big mouth. No, I'm never going to tell you exactly. whose mouth it is. It's a big mouth. Yes. Yeah, so. we have a we got a guest that's on our switchboard. Let's uh, welcome in our caller. You're welcome to uh, speak with us live on Loudmouth Radio. Caller, what's your name and where you're calling from? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, uh, my name is Doc Z, and I am a filmmaker, and I just tweeted you like <laughs> 10 minutes ago. Oh, my and- God, fabulous. Oh, welcome. <laughs> uh, welcome I'm a medical show. doctor and also a filmmaker. So well, quite an interesting... Well, every day. <laughs> That's a killer combination. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm originally from Pakistan, but I moved here 12 years ago, and... I pursued my passion of making films since I was a child. I always awesome. wanted to make films. But awesome. uh, when I was living in Pakistan, uh, everybody, mm-hmm. my brothers and sisters, parents, they all encouraged me to become a doctor. So I went to medical school and I became a doctor. And uh, I was practicing medicine in Pakistan. And then mm-hmm. I was actually, uh, this will really uh, amaze you, it is a little sad, but I was working in Pakistan Institute of Medical Sciences where the women who did not have children were burnt by their in-laws. Oh, my God. I've heard of that. Yeah, I've yes. heard of that oh, so God. much. That's very common in that side of the world. Yeah, so in the mm. small villages and, uh, you know, it is uh, still happening and um I was working with these women who would die in my hands, and I decided Mm. that I'm going to do something about it. So I made, I came to America, and I made two feature films about women empowerment. So my first film. Oh, wow. That's my thing. Now, that's my thing. You're on the, you're calling on the right night. I love it. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) So Night of Henna was my first feature film. Uh-huh. which was released in 25 cities all over in USA. And wow. the film was about a woman who was brought from Pakistan by her family, and she did not know that she was in an arranged marriage. Mm. So when she, she comes here... did not know here, You said that she did not know? Yeah, she did not. She had no idea that her parents wow. had given word to some family that when she will grow up, she is going to be, you know, their somebody's wife. And she had no Mm -hmm. idea Mm -hmm. that this this was a family tradition. And she comes here and she wants to go to college and she she wants to work. But when she finds out that she's in an arranged marriage, so that's what the film is about. And I was lucky enough that my film... um, was shot by an Academy Award cinematographer. Uh, 
Wow. Uh, oh. <laughs> I this is nice. Right. Listen, I just want to know the name of it. I'm going to end the show now, and I'm going to go watch the movie. <laughs> 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 yes, please. Tell us the name of the film again. The film is Night of Hannah, and Hannah is spelled at H-E-N-N-A. Okay. So that was Night my very Hannah. first feature film, and I mm-hmm. did a second film in 2009, okay. which is called Bicycle Bride, and that was also... I heard of that. Yeah. Bicycle that one Bride. actually was, it played in Atlanta in... Um, yes. It, it, so um, that one was more like a comedy made in San mm-hmm. Francisco, but mm-hmm. it was also about arranged marriages. So I um, surely heard of that. Wow, I feel so special. You're calling on Oh, we're show. so honored. Thank you so much. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. I, I did see, I, I think we were right before we were preparing to go on, I did see the tweet and I responded back to you. And I had a glimpse, you know, a lot of times when we're getting ready to go on live, um, you know, we're kind of scrambling and running around. So I only had a hot <laughs> I know how it is. kind of glimpse. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I glimpsed at the information, and I said, I thought I saw a doctor. Then I saw a thought filmmaker. I said, okay, cool. And so I couldn't <laughs> – I really couldn't put the two <laughs> together. And um, so how did you find us, or how did you hear about us? Well, uh, it's just amazing how, you know, the world has become such a small yeah. Tiny really, place. I was just looking has. through my you. Um, I was following you, and then suddenly I saw a tweet. Uh, be you know, it was kind of like if you want to be part of the program, call on this mm-hmm. number. So mm-hmm. I was like, wow, because I have done radio for twelve years when I was a kid. Uh, I started. Oh, wow. I was a host for radio show when I was fifteen in Pakistan. I did that for ten years. So radio. Oh my just, god! <laughs> wow. Radio is just so, Dr. amazing. Lee, I gotta ask, where are you physically now in the U.S.? Where do you live? Right now, I am in downtown San Francisco, and it is just gorgeous. <laughs> I'm so jealous. You oh, just so we're really like jealous rubbing it in, right? <laughs> we're, letting the, yeah. we're letting the whole global world know that we're really hating. <laughs> that we're not. We are seen. so <laughs> hating on that one. <laughs> We have a good friend, actually, one of our very dear brothers, Dr. K. Jarrell, actually in San Francisco right now, and he was having such a hard time because he travels all over from hospital to hospital, and um, he was in Mississippi, then he had to go to Baltimore, and it was just during the time when we had all of that ice freeze over in the last few weeks. So his tweets were, oh, my God, I'm stuck. It's freezing. I, this is, I'm, I'm ready to get out of here. Then he would come home, and it would be freezing here and so forth and so on. So yesterday, either yesterday or today, we get a we get a um, Facebook post that, oh, my God, I'm in San Francisco, and I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's gorgeous here right now. It it's is. It's like 85 it is degrees. 85? <laughs> 65. Wow. Wow, that so, still let, sounds good, Doc. <laughs> let me ask you a question. Um, sure. What type of medicine did you practice? Did you just do general or was it was Yeah, it I was specific? doing family medicine. Yeah, mm-hmm. family medicine. So I uh, I was very young. Uh, I'm 40 now. So I was 25, 26 years old when I finished mm-hmm. my medical school. So uh, I was 19, and I had, like, this amazing intelligence or whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm, so I got a mm-hmm. scholarship. Uh, mm-hmm. So it, it was just amazing to, you know, go to medical school and read those big, big, huge books of surgery, yes. medicine, and, yes. uh, you know, ENT, I, and pathology, and it was just wonderful. And if I thought if I could do that, I could make movies too. <laughs> exactly. So, so you're only doing oh my movies God, now in wonderful. San Francisco, or are you doing still? Are you practicing there well, as I well do as? Work, uh, I do work with a chiropractor, but that when you are in in the movie business, you really have to like you have to focus. now you are you have to be dedicated to whatever yes. you do. So That's like true. just the way you guys are doing this show, so there's a lot of prep which goes into. You know, Please tell. Wait a minute. Do, wait, Dr. Z. Hold. Um, audience, America, Pakistan, the world, Europe, the entire universe. Please hear the last statement that he said about preparation. Say it one more time so everybody can know that it's not a joke. I'm just, no, and on. it is not a joke. Anything you do in life, and 
you have to prepare for it and then you have to be persistent. And mm-hmm. with preparation and persistent, that's when the success comes to you. That's it. And that's how you achieve goals in life. I have just finished a new feature film. It's mm-hmm. called House oh, of okay. Temptation. And mm. right now I'm doing an Indiegogo campaign where I'm asking people to uh, donate to our campaign so that we can release the movie all over America in theaters. Wonderful. So Wonderful. right now Wonderful. that's my campaign, a House of Temptation. And this film is more about empowering a family. So mm. it's, it's trusting in it. the process and having faith and empowering yeah, speak it, people. Speak it, Dr. That's what I love the film it. Is. That yeah. is amazing. You know, nothing ever happens, we believe anyway, um, per chance. We don't we don't do the coincident words and you know, it's so funny when we're preparing for shows, especially online, people always kinda of downplay. They don't realize that online radio is really where the majority of radio is going. The majority mm-hmm. of our T V now is online and movies are downstreamed every day. So They kind of play down sometimes when we're saying, well, we got to get prepped for the show. We have to, you know, it's a lot of work that goes in prior to having guests come on and researching our um, individual topics and things like that. So they think, you know, it just takes like a day or a couple of hours to get it together. They have no clue what goes behind putting just this small little baby of a show together. And it is a lot of work. You know, but today we were faced with some challenges, and I'm telling you, if you don't face them, stare them in the face and go, no matter what, I have a vision, I have a goal, and I have a dream, and no matter what or how big you look, I must stand and face you down, jump over you, get through you, wait until you move, whatever, but I'm going to reach my goals. I'm going to reach that goal. That vision yeah, that talking dream. about vision, you know, it is just amazing that, you know, how even you started the show, you talked about the vision, and I came from a third world country with a dream and a vision. Yes. And then I made it happen, and then one day uh, my distributor put a red mm-hmm. carpet gala for us in New York. So I was written wow. up in New York Times and Village Voice, and my film was releasing all over the country. And that was just that vision. And then along with the vision, the preparation and persistence, that yes, is, is also important. Yes, I am, I'm so excited. You just you don't even know how much I love Pakistan and India because you don't know me yet. And so now we're going to be best friends. You'll, you'll <laughs> begin to know me. Um, but I love, 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 love. The, the country. I love so many of the customs are so beautiful. And it's so funny. Two of my really dearest friends are from Pakistan and I lost uh, contact with one. And I'm telling you, I love Twitter and Facebook. It's the best thing in the world. <laughs> yes, it <laughs> is. And, and I, Dr. I searched her down. Sure. Yeah, it is. It is just now with, you know, when I was growing up, you know, we had only like four radio stations in the whole country. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. and now just it's so amazing that, you know, with just one phone call, uh, you know, you can create. And radio is, it's a whole different world. It's not television, not cinema. Right. It has a whole heartwarming feeling mm-hmm. of being able to like your your sound your voice is on air and it's, it's yes. a very different connection and I, I just love that I just love awesome. that part of it. Oh my well, God. Dr. Z I want to just say this I had, I've just been really listening and I'm also I will tell you once you get off of here you're going to see I've been just tweeting and blowing you up since we've been on this <laughs> on this segment <laughs> with you I want to tell you thank you so much for for following us um, yeah, reaching out really. to us, and this is an honor for me because I actually, I myself um, have an undergrad degree in video and film, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I studied at the Savannah College of Art and Design. Oh, I have been to I, Savannah. It's gorgeous. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. And uh, we actually, even though we're in Atlanta, there's a campus here in Atlanta now. 
Um, and I'm actually working on the script, have not had my hand on it as much as I would like. Um, but I just want to tell you, we're going to uh, definitely, we shout out that you're on the air with us tonight. I've already kind of circulated the Bicycle Bride, the Night of Henna, and now I'm actually posting about your Indiegogo campaign. And trust yeah, me about this, yeah. y'all understand. I worked on our Indiegogo campaign for, oh, my God, Jazzy, how, how long? About five or six Mine. months. Yeah, months. And, yeah. Uh, you know, and it was my first kind of go at it, but it, I spent a lot of time researching which was yes. probably the most time. And then when I did set it up, um, I put a, a substantial size campaign up there, and I, I, I looked to introduce it, you know, into the market, and I probably would break it up a little bit because it has so many elements to it. Sure. Um, but like you said, film, even with radio, you know, I've had people I've had communication with, and I say, you know, I'm the host, but I'm the producer. You know, Loud Mouth is my, is my company, but a lot of people don't even understand from a radio perspective how production it's just right. Oh yeah, it right. is. It is and, very specialized yes. thing, and it's a lot of work and research to do a yes. show. I mm-hmm. just congratulate you for you know taking such a big initiative and going on air. It's a very big thing. Oh, yes. thank you, thank you so much. I mean, we look forward to connecting with you. Um, I know I'll be out in Los Angeles. Uh, I believe Jazz is going to be in Los Angeles with me as well in in August. In mid sure. mid August, are you residing in San Francisco now? Yes, I am in San Francisco, okay. and okay. Uh, you know, if any of the uh, you know listeners, if they want to communicate with me, uh, they can just go to my Facebook, which is D O C Doc, and last name is Z E E, and um, my uh, Indiegogo campaign, the new film which I have just finished, is House of temptation so they can just google it and i would mm-hmm. love to be in touch with you and you have Absolutely. my twitter is so is this your handsome little picture of you here Wait. on this indiegogo promotional video is that you <laughs> yeah that is me okay i'm looking at you Wait, i've actually now. already shared it out <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute dump Z, let me just tell everybody that is the coolest name in the whole universe dump <laughs> thank Z. you love it but before you go I don't know if you have some time. Our, my show, The Bear Truth, Love, Life, Sex, and Flowers, actually will, will start in a few minutes after we go to a commercial break. And we're really going to be talking about um, hair loss, which is alopecia and hair loss with cancer survivors. So we're going to have some really powerful people on. If you want to come back on the show, if you want to hang on, listen in, and chime in and give us any of your expertise, that would be absolutely fabulous. Okay, I would love to do that. I will, uh, I'll be here listening to the show, and okay. I'll just step in. Okay, I love okay, it. Awesome. I love it. <laughs> thank that you so it. much thank for you. your time. Okay. You thank you. Well, we have someone well. else. We have someone else, and we actually do have about two minutes uh, before we start the bare truth. And Dr. Z, I don't know, maybe somebody on here that may want to say something to you, so I'm going to bring this caller on live. Welcome to Loudmouth Radio. Good evening. Good My evening. My name is Stacy Morrell Tucker. How are you today? Hi, Stacy. Stacy, hi. I believe, this is- I believe this is our, is this your guest for this evening that's on the line with us? Yes, it is. It's- Hi, Jazzy. Oh, great. Hi, Stacy girl. What's happening? We're going to come on in just a few minutes. Don't give them all. Don't give it to them yet, Stacey. Hang on. Should okay. we all just hang here? Yes. 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 Hang on just okay, a all right. I, I know uh, Sonny's going to go and tell us all about, you know, we have to pay the bills, so we have to give our props to those that support us. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Dr. Z, we will uh, maintain you here with us. Um, if you would like to um, speak at any time, we're actually present to be able to, you know, allow you to speak and interject. So I'm going to keep, I'm not going to mute you out. I'm going to keep you live. And so this is great. Um, you are okay. very unexpected, but a pleasant surprise. Stacy. you too as well. Um, excited to have you on the line. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and kind of get our little introduction in for our new season opener for the Bear Truth, Love, Life, Sex, and Flowers with Ms. Jazzy Jones, which is one of our premier shows that is now going into year number two. Uh, we actually started our broadcast last year online with Loudmouth Radio in January last year, 2013. And we're now at a place where we are looking to grow into leaps and bounds. 
um, with our actual broadcast, with our um, our subject matter, with our actual guests, and we, we pretty much open up the floor to allow so many different things to transpire on our show because we're in the communities. We're not afraid to tackle tough subject matters, things that may make other people uncomfortable to speak about, but somebody needs to be able to open that floor to allow uh, someone to be heard. So tonight we are uh, looking forward to this actual show with the Bear True Love, Life, Sex, and Flowers with Miss Jazzy Jones, which is also sponsored by the Bear Heads Dream Wedding Expo, which is taking place June 15, 2014, in the metro Atlanta area. For more information, we want to visit, ask you to visit the website online at Bear Heads Wedding Expo. And Bear Heads is spelled B-A-R-E-H-E-A-D-S, BearHeadsWeddingExpo.com. As well as we want to make sure that our listeners are able to connect with us. We are on Twitter, so you feel free to tweet with us while we're online, at Loudmouth, L-O-U-D-D-M-O-U-T-H as well as we're on Facebook at Loudmouth Radio Network. You have the ability to connect with us and post online with us there. And after this intro, we're going to have Jazzy come live and start her show, The Bare Truth, Love, Life, Sex, and Flowers. The Bare Truth, Love, Life, Sex, and Flowers with Miss Jazzy Jones, live on Loudmouth Radio. I absolutely love it. Let me just let you guys in on a little secret. The music that we heard tonight, part of it, the large part of it, my son, my oldest, my most beautiful oldest and dearest son, Jermaine Jones, is mixing and bringing music together, and he is having the best time um, bring it sound. So I said, son, send me some music to come in on my uh, my show. And he was like, but mom, it's raw. It hasn't been cut. I said, I don't care. Whatever you do, it's going to be fine. So kudos to Jermaine for giving us that little prompt intro and comment coming in and saying a touch of jazz because I really am a touch of jazz and all that kind of good stuff. So as I say every Tuesday, I'm so happy to be back on my show so I can say, Get your favorite choice of beverage, no matter what that is. I usually have hot tea. But get your favorite choice of beverage, put your feet up, kick back, relax, and we're getting ready to go right into the best show that I absolutely think. Anyway, I think we're the best show on this whole Loudmouth Radio Network, but that's just my own biased opinion. Um, But I always want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, because you could have chose anything else to do on a Tuesday night, but you chose to be with us. And even if you're all the way from across seas or right here in the Atlanta area, I want to say thank you. So having said all of that, if you heard the last part of our new series startup, which is What's on Your Mind Atlanta, and that doesn't mean you have to be in Atlanta. It just means, you know, we happen to be here and we're putting it out there for anybody to call to speak what's on their mind. And we just had such a beautiful surprise guest from Dr. Z, who is still going to be on the line with us. And we do also have our special guest this evening, which is the most beautiful. Let me tell you, before I introduce her, which we kind of did in the last show. But I posted our pictures like I do every week. I always want to put our guest up, and then I'll put our special flower that I'll talk about at the end of the show. And all of that, I usually have a picture of myself and the topic of the show which this topic tonight is called Yes, My Bald is Beautiful. And it's actually a campaign that I have for bald or barehead women primarily that have lost their hair, shaved their heads in support of their cause. So it's really a women's empowerment campaign to show that our bald can be beautiful and represent something. We don't just have to be bald 
due to a disease or disorder. Me personally, my hair grows tremendously, but I choose to cut it for several reasons. One, I'm older, I'm tired, and I got hot, so I shaved off all of my hair. (laughs) Secondly, I decided that I wanted to use this opportunity as a quick flash of information because I had so many people coming up to me going, oh, my God, you're so beautiful, your hair is so beautiful, your hair is so beautiful. Or they would say, did you lose your hair to cancer? Was it some traumatic reason why you don't have hair? For me being what I have been uh, coined as as a social activist or, you know, if they want something done, they call Jazzy. If you need, you need help, call Jazzy. And I try to do the best that I can to empower myself, my community, and globally. Those are really my, my goals in life. But what I found is in the process of somebody saying, oh, my God, your hair is beautiful, I get to say, did you know one in every three women of the interviews One in every three. So for every little group you see, just count one, two, three, abuse, one, two, three, abuse, one, two, three, abuse. So just to put people's minds in a place quickly to say, here is a cause that's near and dear to me, which is domestic violence against women and girls, and now LGBTQ because it's just as rampant. So that's one of my babies. Then somebody else would say, wow, you're so beautiful. I love your hair. And I would go, do you know how many homeless people it is right here in the, in, in the Atlanta area? Do you know all you need to do is just take that food that you're not eating, that you decided I don't want that sandwich, I want another one, just give it to somebody. So I'm saying all of that to say I have so many causes. I have so many things that I'm passionate about that I want the world to also see because sometimes we don't see things because we're not looking for them. We're not looking for sex trafficking. We're not looking for homelessness. We're not looking for, well, she's bald because she lost her hair, not to cancer because cancer is always the one that somebody talks to, talks about, but she lost her hair at 13 when her hair just started falling out from alopecia, which is why we're going to have this conversation tonight. So I wanted to give you guys kind of a a reason behind Bare Heads, and it has really become a campaign for me um, in so many ways, but the Yes, My Bald is Beautiful really stood out to me last year when I wanted to say society, bald women are beautiful, period. No matter why they're bald, they're beautiful. Respect the choice or respect the loss and let's embrace their beauty. They don't have to wear a wig, or if they want to, it's fine, but they don't have to. So welcome, Miss Tucker, who the whole Facebook has blown up and said, oh, my God, who is this gorgeous woman? <laughs> so welcome, welcome to the show. I'm so, so Thanks thrilled. Thanks for me. You're so welcome. And tell us, tell everybody where you are in the world right now. Okay, I'm in a little video, Arkansas. <laughs> Has anybody ever heard of Arkansas' homeland of Bill Clinton, President Bill Clinton? Yes. That's where I reside. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Grew up in a little bitty old country town. <laughs> <laughs> is it really, really cold there? I know it probably is. Oh, goodness gracious. We, you know, this is so, you know, we're not used to having real winter weather. We have truly mm-hmm. had winter weather. We're so sick of it. I was telling my daughter, you know, I'm so sick of it. Like I, I I'm, I'm done. I, I want to break up a winter, and I don't want winter to come back here again. Right <laughs> I know. And Dr. Z is out there saying, "Oh, I'm in San Francisco, and it's absolutely beautiful." He's just rubbing it all in for us yes, tonight. Yes, it is just amazing. <laughs> okay. um, I'm envious. You know, I was in uh, in January. I went to Philadelphia for a mm-hmm. week, but I got so lucky that. For a week when I was staying there and then I went to New York, it was not that cold. And wow. as soon as my plane took off, they told that it's really now freezing. And so I, I got lucky. <laughs> See, <laughs> but... we're going to follow you because you just run around in the greatest weather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, Stacey, tell, you have a beautiful Facebook um, page that I started following because I actually hooked up with um, the Alopecia Foundation out of Australia and followed um, 
Matthew and Kyle's story, and I think I saw you had it posted on your website as well, and I called and said, listen, I need to get permission to post these because this story is incredible, and so many other stories like that. So tell us a little bit. For those of you that don't know what alopecia is, go ahead, Stacey, and give them your your version. I'll tell because I'm a 30 year hairstylist, so I've seen it, I've had to deal with it, and then we'll hear from Dr. Z as well. Okay. Now there are, of course, different forms of alopecia. Um, one mm-hmm. is, you know, autoimmune deficiency or mm-hmm. condition or disease. I like to say condition. I don't really like to say disease because when you say disease, it scares people. It does. It's an autoimmune does. condition. And um, there's some that, you know, is self-induced, which is, you know, we call um, traction alopecia, and some is hereditary. Mm-hmm. Um, in my mm-hmm. case, I have um, scarring alopecia. Um, okay. You know, it could be hereditary as well because my father started losing his hair um, in his uh, mid-20s, um, um, late-20s when he started losing his hair. So he started losing his, losing his hair at a, at a young age. And mm-hmm. my sister also have um, thinning at the top, you know, but I think by me educating people and educating her, I think we were able to possibly stop her from progressing. Um, when I awesome. initially was diagnosed with alopecia, well, actually, I was misdiagnosed initially. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. I went to the doctor, a dermatologist, and I had, um, you know, some kind of like scabs in my scalp. You know, and I know mm-hmm. it was the chemical burns because at that time I, I did have a perm. I was mm-hmm. wearing relaxed people saw a creamy crack. I was wearing that um, back then, but I rarely got it. I got a perm properly every three to four months because my the type of braided hair I had, I didn't take me having to put perm in my hair a lot. Okay, but okay. I went there and the dermatologist said that I had a fungal infection. He gave me um, this steroids drop. It's just kind of drop in a, in a, in a um, like clear liquid and mm-hmm. um, Nazarol shampoo. And okay, I did that yep, in my hair. Common. You know, it, it took care of that. You know, it was mm-hmm. okay. And then I guess three years later or two years later it came back again, but this time it was worse. But this time it's really sore. It was sore mm-hmm. to touch. I'm like, what is really going on? And I'm like, honestly, it scared me. And it's because, you know, I'm I'm young at that time. I'm 20. At this time when I went to the dermatologist, the second time I'm 26. Okay. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, I've got some type of disease because I'm like, something was wrong. I'm thinking I had syphilis. Of course, you know, I'm just thinking, what's going on with me? Because I had right. never heard of alopecia or whatever. But then the doctor uh-huh. told me that, you have alopecia. He did not take um, blood analysis. He did not do a scalp analysis. He just looked at my scalp and said, you have alopecia. Gave me a pamphlet and pretty much that, that's that. You know, and I'm like, okay, what is wow. alopecia? I'm, I'm freaking out. I'm looking at the pamphlet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I never heard of alopecia. And as a uh, Caucasian woman um, on the pamphlet, she didn't have eyebrows right. or eyelashes, no hair. I'm thinking, oh, my God, I was walking on eggshells. I'm thinking at 26, I'm getting ready to lose my eyebrows, my eyelashes, you know, but my, it was a slow progress, you know, before it, you know, completely went away. But, mm-hmm. you know, we don't have, in the state of Arkansas, there are not any trichologists. And he was just so um, nonchalant about it. You know, he uh-huh. wasn't, you know, uh-huh. empathetic. And I just, you know, gave him a pamphlet and and I just and kind of disregarded it. it. I thought he just misdiagnosed me. And me being ignorant, not understanding, or ever hearing of alopecia, I'm thinking he mm-hmm. misdiagnosed me. Black people don't get alopecia. Okay, so this is right. this is my frame of mind at the time. Black people don't get alopecia. You don't even know what he's talking about. I love you know, it. I, just I absolutely it, love know. it. And I went on about my business, and you know, and mm-hmm. I went on. I'm thinking, you know, and then and it ended up, you know, because it was in the started in the crown area, but mm-hmm. you know, I was my hair was otherwise very long because I always had long hair as a kid. That would be a conversational piece every time, as little as six that I can remember, I would, you know, be around adults and they'd be like, oh, yeah, baby, you would tell my mother and my father, oh, yeah, baby, no, she got some pretty hair. Can I have some of your hair? I would always get that, <laughs> you know, and then when I became a teenager, then it become, you know, hateration came in. Females hated me because my hair at that time was past my shoulders, like mid-back, and I was getting depressed and calm. I didn't have, you know, perms or whatever. And I would get people all the time because I've always had hair. So hair to me wasn't anything to me because I was born with it. I always had hair. Right, right. I always you wanted had a, that you had a lot of hair. haircut, mm-hmm. you know. I wanted that haircut uh-huh. because I thought it was so 
you know, this is when I become a grown woman. I said, I want that haircut. Oh, I want that haircut. And I remember asking my mother, who was a cosmetologist at the time, to cut my hair. She refused. And I grew up in a family where hair was mm-hmm. talked about as your glory, you know, that you don't cut your hair, especially my grandmother. You know, you, oh, you, know, you don't, you know. A, so. Definitely in a black church, black family, yes. very strict, you very religious. Not, you do yes, not cut your I come hair. From a very, absolutely. So I just. You disregarded what my mother said. I'm getting my hair cut. I wanted my hair cut just that bad, so I went to it because my mother has always done my hair. And I decided to go to a local beautician. Oh, we call beautician, you know, we country, but, you know, cosmetologist. And I went to, you know, get my hair cut. And she said, uh-huh. well, let me tell you something. She said, Stacey, are you sure you really want to cut your hair? I said, yeah. Uh-huh. She said, I'm going to tell you what. She said, I want you to come back in two weeks. I want mm-hmm. you to think about it because I don't want you to be on this whim. I mean, you know, just this impulse. I want exactly. you to really think about it and come back. Two weeks later, I came back. I want my hair cut. And, mm-hmm. you know, I always had a very young face, and I wanted to look like I, I was so tired of being carded, you know, whenever I would go to, you know, the store, you know, <laughs> try to get a, you know, I called, I just, I wanted to look like a woman. Here I am, you uh-huh. know, at this time uh-huh. I think I was 22, and I just wanted to look like a woman, you know. And, like, when yeah. I got that haircut, when she started cutting my hair, actually, she cut it like a bob. She, you know, I saw, mm-hmm. like, tw- like, 12 inches of hair on on the floor. And How did you handle it? Cut my hair. Were you okay? I, I, I was okay. I looked at it because she stopped. She said, you sure? You want me to go in the floor? I was like, yeah. And, and you know, I wasn't yeah. nervous about you it. You were ready. I was, you were I ready. I was excited. I wanted yeah. this haircut, you know. Yeah. I just thought Halle Berry was so beautiful, and I had the little skinny face like Halle. I wanted that haircut. And she wanted to cut my hair, and I thought I was the sexiest thing walking around, months and so on. She's like, oh, I got it going on. And I went mm-hmm. to my mother. I was like, how you like it? She went, oh. She gasped. She said, I can't believe you cut your hair. But yeah. it's cute, though. It's mm-hmm. really cute. Mm-hmm. Your grandmother's going to kill you, though. <laughs> your grandmother is going to kill you. And I'm just like, yes, okay. So for weeks I was kind of nervous about going to see my grandmother. And I finally went to see her. And she really hurt my little feelings. She really did. You know, she called me a little boy. You know, you know, you cut your. I mean, she just went off on me, and I felt so bad. And I felt that was the first time I, I, I guess I saw. Well, maybe hair is what is. You know, what makes me beautiful. Right. And right. I let my hair and, go back, and I never mm-hmm. cut it again until mm-hmm. alopecia robbed me from it. Right. But you know what? I, it, it's so interesting. You touched on so many things, and I'm sitting here like, oh, make sure I make sure I touch on that. First and foremost, the the first thing that you said was black people don't get alopecia. Mm -hmm. You know, such a a misinformed Mm -hmm. um, piece of information where we do this thing and this is this is coming from my cosmetology side. We get into this white people hair, black people hair, Indian hair, Pakistan hair, Asian, you know, the whole nine. Instead of saying texture, we say race, number mm-hmm. one. There is no such thing as white people, black people, so forth and so on kind of hair. Mm-hmm. Because if you're saying that you had the type of texture that did not require, and for those of you that, that don't know, um, perms and relaxers are straighteners and or curlers, um, depending on the grade of hair. So we call a relaxer a perm. It really isn't. It really is a relaxer that relaxes the the curliness of your hair. A perm, quote unquote, is um, something that we use to curl hair. But but okay. we switch it up in the African American culture. Nevertheless, um, it is a chemical. It is an ammonia, or it is a sulfate. It is is strong. It's damaging. Your hair can be very pretty, and you can use things to maintain it, but it is, relaxer is strong enough to actually melt off of, let let me just give you guys a secret. In the salon, like when your curlers get really backed up and caked up with oil, we put relaxer on it to eat off that, (laughs) to eat off the stuff on curling irons, just so you know. Now, I'm not on this show this night telling you not to get a relaxer. I'm just telling you what how strong a relaxer is, okay? It's sodium just, okay, anyway, whatever. So nevertheless, <laughs> nevertheless, so you can get alopecia from chemical burns, mm-hmm. 
Okay. okay. So a lot of people are so not aware I'll of that. So I put a little bit of my uh, knowledge here uh, also and talk mm-hmm. a little bit about it. And um, I think that we um, the most important reason for alopecia is immune deficiency. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. what that means is that we do not eat properly. Right. We yes. are eating McDonald's and we are eating Burger King and all mm-hmm. that, and that does not have enough nutrition, right. which is needed for the body, for all mm-hmm. these hair follicles to grow properly. Right. And so what happens is that if you are immunodeficient and if there are certain things which are not, which you don't, eat when you're younger because a lot of teenagers and even kids Mm -hmm. get alopecia. So it is extremely important that the diet is maintained and everything which we need while we are growing up or we have grown uh, is, is proper in the diet to have a nutritional balanced meal, which is important to get, you know, all the hair and everything uh, right. balance. So I will I, I will just say that that is one another factor which can also be uh you know it, it's considerably important to uh look at because mm-hmm. uh, some kids might be like just the way uh you know you told your story and you know your grandma said you can't have your hair cut and so you got this but was there something in the diet which you were not eating properly. And so I, I highly encourage people to really see their diet, what they are eating, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. to, you know, have a balanced kind of life. And that, exactly. that is my two cents. Exactly. We love your two cents. When, when people used to come into the salon and they would say, Jazzy, you know, my hair is falling out, um, you know, especially if it had been people who hadn't been to me on a regular basis, and I did hair for 30 years, a little bit over 30 years. And um, so when people would come and say, you know, my hair is falling out, the first thing I would say is, what are you eating? How is your diet? Yes. Mm-hmm. That that would be number one. How much water are you drinking? Because it was such a lack of water. You know, your hair was really dry, it was really brittle. And then, of course, you know, how much chemicals are we using, you know, has it been used on a regular basis, and, you know, try and trial and error from all those three sides. Let's watch what we're putting in your hair, on your hair. Let's watch what you're taking, intake of your diet and your water. So, you know, we kind of monitored those three things for months. Um, you know, just can I interject? Because I don't mean mm-hmm. to go, ahead. Uh, no, no, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. When you say that, you know, my it's interesting that you would say that because, um, my cosmetologist, who I went to for several, you know, years, mm-hmm. never once, you know, I don't know if she even knew what alopecia was. She never mentioned anything about alopecia, nor did she ask me, you know, about my diet or anything like that. Um, but when I, you know, she didn't give me any, you know, advice. All she really did was mask my my condition, you know, make, yeah. uh, fix my hair, yeah. different hairstyles to camouflage it to keep it from, you know, showing it because my hair was barely, barely still long, but it was beginning mm-hmm. to thin. But it was thin out. Like cracks at the top to keep it to make it thicker. Right. But it wasn't until I um, moved from my hometown and moved here where I'm at now that my um, cosmetologist at that time she asked me, she said, "Stacy, have you been to the doctor?" She asked, she asked me, "Was I taking any type of medicine?" So she uh-huh. was asking me that. You know, Good so question. the first time anybody mm-hmm. even asked me about that, I would say no. She said, well, you know, you might want to go check out, you know, check out, make sure your thyroid is okay. You know, you know she yep. suggested that I go. And at that time, yeah. honestly, you know, I already knew I had alopecia, but I just, you know, was embarrassed, ashamed. Right. Um, you know, and I, and it could have been, you know, again, like the doctor said, it could have been some other things, you know, something in my diet. I never went to, I never went any further, you know, so that's why I, um, found assistance living with alopecia for just this reason now to, to provide multiple uh, resources and education so I can save other women's hair. You said that really fast, so I want people to know your program and your, your campaign is called what again? Say it slow so oh, everybody I'm can sorry. hear it. Yes, Sisters Living with Alopecia. And it's fabulous. Her, her, um, 
her Facebook, I just love it. I just go strolling down and just look at all the beautiful bald head kids and women. And, and you know, we have a friend of mine. I was hoping that he's going to call. Um, you very seldom hear men talk about having alopecia, but it is so many. It's, it's unbelievable. Men started to be sociably acceptable, uh, except with a bald head for um years ago, but it, it, they, they didn't feel like they were. And then it was so funny how Caucasian men would say, well, we can't wear a bald head. Black men look better with bald heads than white men. And now you see more white men with, you know, wearing their hair that's bald. But a lot of men have been losing their hair for years, and then they would take and swoop that little circle around. And I used to say, listen, I promise you we can cut it off and you're still going to be sexy. <laughs> <laughs> You're still going to be mm-hmm. sick. But a lot of times it was because they had alopecia as well, um, but didn't know, again, a lot of cosmetologists know about it, but they they don't go back to basics. They don't go back mm-hmm. to the studies, the diseases and disorders. For one, we cannot we cannot diagnose a disease as a cosmetologist. We can tell you of disorders. We have to refer you to a doctor or, or we can be sued because we're not doctors. Mm-hmm. You know, so, but that's, that's the first thing that I'm going to say, what are you eating? And it's because I approach my craft more from a holistic way than I did as give me your money. I don't care that your hair is falling out. I'll see you next week. So you have a lot of people that don't care about the craft and the profession and you as a client other than give me your money. So unfortunately, I have to apologize for a lot of uh, cosmetologists and master cosmetologists around the world because they just don't. They don't go back to basics. But it is important that you had a really good one that told you where to go and what to do. Then the other thing you mentioned was a trichologist, which is extremely rare um, in certain cities and certain um, states, is because they only do the study of hair. They, the, everything that concerns hair, they study. Some dermatologists do the same thing as cosmetologists because Dr. Z, would you even say sometimes doctors get so relaxed that this is what I do every day that the bedside manner slips away, which it sounds like what Stacey has. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the thing is uh, that, um, you know, whenever a patient comes to you, like if you are practicing something, you usually what you do is whatever you are prescribing, like every day you kind of, because there's so much, uh, you know, pressure on doctors also, so they don't go into the reasons and the basics. So it's going back to the basics I said that, you know, uh, what was your diet when you were young? Are you drinking a lot of sodas? Like I came to America, and before, when I was in Pakistan, we never had sodas over there. It's like We were not brought up on those kind of things, and we were never had fast food. So mm-hmm. I came here, and then I had all this, I was, uh, you know, fast food and all that. In the beginning, mm-hmm. I had a little bit of it, but then I realized that it is not good for you. Um, Why? Drinking sodas. Uh, you know, just quick and, you know, pick up something quickly and you're at work and you're stressed out. And so, mm-hmm. like, when you eat, you should eat properly your meal, you know, give some time to it so that your body, you're nourishing your body. So I just kind of go back to the basics and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I think that, uh, I think that if people realize that, you know, how important their bodies are like we don't mm-hmm. really pay attention mm-hmm. to who we are just looking at how much money we're going to make what's our, <laughs> when are we going to work when are we coming back we are taking care of other people all the time and we yeah. don't realize that this is our body which we are constantly every day doing things with it and there are thousands of you know, cells are involved. I mean, millions of cells are involved in the body, and every every cell is doing a function, and it needs proper nourishment. A hair follicle mm-hmm. needs a proper nourishment to mm-hmm. grow, and mm-hmm. if that nourishment is not provided, it's not gonna, you know, it's not just not gonna function properly. So, uh, I think that the best thing in um, you know, even when you go to a doctor, you should be also 
a person should also be knowledgeable. Right now, right. with this Google thing, you can just, you know, put, find everything. Yeah, like find everything and try to understand, educate yourself, as, as you guys are all saying, that mm-hmm. how important it is to educate yourself uh, about things. So, you know, even you go to the doctor, you should be well aware of, you should have some education about what's going on in your body, very, that you can help true. the doctor, you know, you can help them. If they are not going in the right direction, maybe you can tell them that, you know, maybe it's something related to, uh, is it related to genetics? Is it related mm-hmm. to food? Is it related to some allergy? Because as, you know, human beings, we get all kind of allergies at different parts of our lives in different ages. And sometimes we have allergy to certain thing, and then after a while, our, our body kind of bounces back and mm-hmm. is not mm-hmm. allergic to that thing anymore. So, so there are a lot of factors which go into the diagnosis of you know any disease. And I think, uh, I think those are the basics which we we should educate ourselves always. Exactly. I wanted to just quickly chime in, and I know we're going to. But I do want to say that uh, kudos for you saying that as as a doctor that we do need to be empowered ourselves about, you know, nobody should know me as well as I know me. Yes. And then if it's something that I don't know about because it's your profession, it should only be because I'm telling you enough information about myself that from now your professional standpoint, you are able to kind of help us figure it out together, yes. number one. And yeah. then number two, Stacey, I love what you did when you said, you know what, um, this doctor just gave me a pamphlet. It's time for me to seek another doctor. Everybody does not mesh well with you. So it's important if one does not work out, let's try another one and maybe another one and maybe another one until we find the perfect fit for you and I to figure out what's going on and how to best treat or and or care for our body. Yeah. You know, so I think it's really, really important too. Holistically, it you know the earth really is full. It's full of everything that we need if we take the time to research what we need. Absolutely. You know, and do the things that we need to do: diet, exercise. You know, exercise is going to allow that blood to flow, which is going to you know feed the follicle, make the hair grow, make the skin glow, the face, and and all. Let me tell you, we had three photo shoots. Let me just throw this in real quick. We had three photo shoots this week, so we were going, going, going. We have not rested well. We hadn't, you know, we didn't drink enough water. We looked, but we had Brittany. Brittany, hi. I know you're listening somewhere. I hope you are anyway. And I told her I was going to shout her out because she did my makeup so beautiful for one of our photo shoots. But let me tell you, I was so exhausted. I was so tired. And so you know, then today I'm wondering why I'm feeling all dehydrated. It's because I have not had enough water. You know, and I said, wait a minute, how much water did I drink today? And I realized midway through the day I hadn't had any water. So it's important that we hydrate. It's important that we eat properly and it's to rest well as well as to exercise. So all of those things that mom told us <laughs> and, our, and our doctors, <laughs> it is absolutely true. So it's important that we follow those, um, all of those key points, eating all of those colorful, the more color we can eat and drink. I love juicing. So the more colors we can eat and drink, the better our skin, the better our bodies and minds will be. So that's my little I have a question for Stacey. Stacey, you still there with us? I am, yes. Hey, this is Sunny. I want to know your... um, Sisters with alopecia, do you actually have like a Facebook page, Twitter handle, or anything for that? Yeah, yeah, we do. We have um, Sisters Living with Alopecia um, on Facebook. Um, and then the um, Twitter is S. Let me make sure. Sorry. Because my assistant set that up and just bear with me one moment because I don't know. It's, um, yes, it's Alopecia Support. Um, on Twitter, it's S L W A. Sorry. Okay, so I'm it's sorry. Twitter.com. Repeat that one more time for Twitter is what okay. now? It's, it's um, twitter.com slash SLWA underscore Inc. So it's alopecia support at SLWA underscore Inc. is what it is on Twitter. 
And I just, okay, I just so, it's, so your Twitter handle. handle is SLWA underscore Inc. Yes. Okay. I'm glad um, you heard that because I was just like feeling Yeah, I was slow. trying to get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, now um, this really nice music is playing in the background, and I do and have I to. <laughs> I do have to take off um, okay, for a meeting. Okay, thank you so much for all of your two cents. It was well worth a million dollars. And yes. all of your information we have posted. We're going to follow you, and you're now my new best friend. And I'm going to come to San Francisco and be warm and eat some Pakistan food because yeah, I love it. Yeah, and I'm going to be doing a premiere red carpet gala of the film House of Temptation in May. So you would be welcome oh, to that wonderful. also. wonderful. <laughs> yes, we'll, we'll keep in touch and, and try to make it out for that. Okay. Thank you so much. And Dr. Z, we have your info. Thank you, Thank you so much for calling in, and we definitely will connect offline. Okay, take care. Thank take care. You. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Stacey, isn't, wasn't he wonderful? So this is yes. the perfect time. Yes. I love to yeah, he, he was, I appreciate it. I'm telling you. And you know what? He was so impromptu. We did have another doctor that was um, going to try to make it in. You know, everybody's so busy. And, and, again, I always thank everybody that joins us for our shows because, seriously, we all are so swamped with stuff, stuff, and more stuff. You know, sometimes we have to take a slow down just to remember who we are. So I always appreciate everybody who can can call in and, and chime into the show. So kudos again to, to Doc Z. That is the coolest name for a doctor in the world. Um, but, Stacey, yeah, the, the thing I wanted to kind of, I don't know, do we, uh, Producer Sonny, ma'am, do we need to go to yes. a break? Okay, I'm You always know how that that music is cueing us for a break, but I, the, the, <laughs> the movement was going so vividly and so smoothly, I didn't want to just totally disturb it, but, but yeah, you know, that was always one of Sorry. our little cues, so. <laughs> yes, go right ahead. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, we are live on the Bear Truth, Love, Life, Sex, and Flowers with Ms. Jazzy Jones on Loudmouth Radio, and this is our premiere week for the new Loudmouth Radio season. We're so excited to be broadcasting live out of Metro Atlanta area. And all our listeners, far and wide, feel free to call in to our studio lines. We're live at 347-826-7520. We'll also have our, um, we're online on our chat. We've had a few people chatting with us, listening in. Um, and we want to shout out um, uh, one of our listeners who was listening to us online and follows us, uh, SGL Cruz, shared he's a gentleman um, they shared that he's actually a cancer survivor, and he said, I guess he wanted to comment on Jazzy's statement that bald men are beautiful also, laugh out loud. So we, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, they are. We, yes, they are. So we'd like to thank our listeners that are listening to us online. Um, if you want to tweet us, you can tweet us at loudmouth, L-O-U-D-D-M-O-U-T-H, and use the hashtag the bare truth, B-A-R-E, when you spell bear, the bare truth, and we'll definitely take your comments, um, any questions you would like to pose to us. Uh, we are so excited to be on air this week. And we also want to make sure that all our listeners know that our broadcast tonight, we also have a show following um, for tomorrow night, which will be the premiere of our new show series, The Legal Voice with Attorney Valerie Vi. This is mm-hmm. going to be a great segment of le- of, of legal um, aspects and different ways to have better understandings of things that are going on in the community. Um, it's going to be very informative. Um, and, it's, you know, just like this show tonight, we're very comfortable, very relaxed. But if, if, if I can't say this to anyone, you know, how important it is it to have questions that you may have or you want to just discuss something, I definitely encourage you to tune in to this show tomorrow night. Um, we actually are, you know, our pre-show, What's On Your Mind Atlanta, starts at 7.30. All our premiere shows start at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that show tomorrow night will be dynamic. Um, uh, attorney Valerie Vi has been a very successful attorney practicing law in Georgia as well as in Maryland. Um, and I, I think that for anyone that has listened to our network over the last year knows mm-hmm. that we are not afraid to touch on anything. So we're excited about her coming on <laughs> into the network. Um, and make sure you follow her. She's on Twitter at Valerie Vi, which is V-I-E Law. And um, definitely connect with us on Facebook. We have our Facebook page, Loudmouth Radio Network. Friend us and like our page there. 
And uh, Thursday night, I pick up steam. We're in the studio with Sonny. I am so excited about this show uh, coming up on Thursday. It's going to be a great show. It's called Matters of the Heart. And I think that it is going to open up a lot of people's eyes in regards to um, some prolific things that have been happening, especially to athletes. Um, you know, unfortunately, we're seeing a lot of athletes who are not aware of certain conditions um, who have uh, literally have lost their lives to um, heart elements and things of that nature um, during that actual mm-hmm. activity on the football field. So we're going to have uh, the show Matters of the Heart taking action to bring awareness of worthy causes. And my guest, Tracy Wilson, who's the CEO of the Terrell Wilson Foundation, um, which is her son, will share her story and how she's um, taken his loss uh, when he actually passed on the football field um, at the age of 14, as well as, mm-hmm. um, yes, as well as Kelsey uh, Stringer, who um, is the wife of uh, NFL player Corey Stringer, who actually um, lost his life uh, during the NFL season in 2001 who also had a heart condition. So Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday is going to be bananas. Um, So we're going to really, this week I think we're touching on a lot of strong subjects, coming out the gate strong. So I just want to encourage all of those that are listening to us tonight to share our network with others. We are so appreciative of our our audience. We don't take anybody for granted. And if you have things that you want to hear or talk about, feel free to email us at loudmouthmedia at gmail. If you can't remember that, go to our website, loudmouthradio.com. You can post on our contact page. We'll get it in our inbox, and we'll definitely respond back to you. So I'm going to let this little uh, Mitchell break play, and then, Jazz, you can come back in and and, uh, take it over. It takes great content and the right media branding mix to deliver a great service. Here at Loudmouth Radio Network, we intend on doing both and exceeding our own expectations. Advertising on LoudmouthRadio.com provides you a cost-effective vehicle to brand your business repeatedly, providing you packages that consistently announce your business without breaking the bank. Despite the traditional high price tag that traditional radio brings, it makes sense to become a media partner with Loudmouth Radio that provides you an already built-in multimedia campaign to push your brand out. Make sure you contact us today, and any of our specialists with Loudmouth Media Brand will be able to help you get out further. Contact us today at 706 763-3895. Three six three three eight nine five, and don't forget visit us online at loudmouthradio.com. That was so cute. I love our commercial. <laughs> you know what, producer? Can I hear that happy song? Because I just feel happy. You don't have to play, but a few sentences of it. Don't you just love that song? For real, I love that song. Oh yes. my God, it's the best that song is, in the entire universe. I love it. As a matter of fact, when right. we have a we're having a, um, a summit next month uh-huh. and for the girls that have alopecia. What we're going to do is I told them to bring their wigs, like if, you know, maybe a wig that they don't wear anymore. And uh-huh. we're going to have a little mini video dancing to that song with the wig, just playing that song. We don't need the oh wig. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. One yeah, day so y'all going to do, do that. I can do, a, I can do a selfie video and, and do it at the same time. What day is that oh, going to be? So cool. It's going to be um, April 5th. It's going to be after the summit. And... Um, if you can give me your cell phone number, or um, I can definitely yeah. text you, so you can go okay. ahead and join. I'll, I'll give it to you on Facebook, and we can you can send okay. it over to me. That is so cool. Okay, producer, you can cut that. That was wonderful. We're gonna finish our we're gonna finish our conversation. Um, you know, the one thing I wanted to touch on, and I know um, Dr. Z just got off the phone, and he has done some film on women empowerment and now family empowerment, and I love that. That's my baby. Empowering women for me is crucial because for so long I was not an empowered woman and I wanted to be one. And so, again, as I started to show out, having this bald head has given me so much empowerment to be able to not only impact myself but to hopefully be able to impact someone else and give someone um, insight. Yeah, I totally agree. I can can relate. Yeah, so I think it's important to kind of touch on, and and then I'll let you speak. I think it's important to touch on the fact that something you said when you didn't really want to address your alopecia once you really kind of had a grip that, oh, God, I'm losing my hair because of shame. The main thing that I think we need to recognize is that 
yes, my bald is beautiful. I do not have to be shameful, whether I'm male or female. Um, but especially with women, we have been so demeaned. We have allowed, as a society, our women to be so demeaned, and not not just here in other countries as well, um, and to make to feel less of of importance, sometimes less of beauty, um, less of value. And so being taught, like you said in the beginning, from being an African-American or a black woman, um, as a child, you're taught that your hair is your glory and you can't cut it, and if you do, you're not beautiful, and all of these many, many different things of a um, a very patriotic type of um, standpoint. So I think it's important for you, and I'll allow you to to share your insight on that, to to encourage women to be strong in their baldness. Yeah, and to I'll be more beautiful. Than black Mm-hmm. I remember when I first did it, when I decided that I was enough, it's enough. It was one hot summer, and I decided I'm not going to do this anymore. It's hot. And mm-hmm. the piece of hair that I had left on my head, you know, I, I kept it on my head because mm-hmm. not, you know, because I, just like when you said about the man that was scraped the little hair over the head, you know. Yes, I girl. I remember being a, a young woman, and I think it's about to see men like that. I was like, why are they holding on to that piece? It looked like Bozo. I mm-hmm. can never understand. That until it got to me. And I said to myself, you know, because I, I mean, looking at my head or whatever, when you look at me, you know, I mean, people, if people knew what was up under that wig, I mean, how I am, who, here I am, a female looking like a bozo, the clown, and a cat fight, you know, the lobster fight for the cat. You know, literally, I had patches all over my head, and I was uh-huh. holding a little string of hair. Yeah. But yeah. it wasn't until I said, you know, I'm, it's hot. I'm tired of wearing this I hot t- wig. And I'm yes. not doing it anymore. And I, I told my brother, I said, shave the rest of my little hair off. And I, and I remember at the time I was, um, I had a YouTube video, and I used to do YouTube uh, wig reviews. Mm-hmm, and I said, mm-hmm. I talked to them, you know, and I wasn't, I wasn't planning on crying. I was cool about it. I said, I'm going to go and shave the rest of my hair. And I said, I'm saying I was ready to go out publicly bald, but I was mm-hmm. ready to shave the rest of my hair because, to me, I realized that the hair, and I get kind of emotional when I think about this, the hair reminded me, of what I used to have, mm-hmm. that it was a constant reminder. And so I shaved that hair because I, it kept reminding me of the long hair I used to have. So right. when I shaved it, it took away that reminder. I was mm-hmm. then able to heal. That's when See? I began to truly really heal, and mm-hmm. that's when I found love for myself. I truly did not love me. I, oh, you know what I'm wow. saying? Because I've been in yes. the same for so long, yeah. and that's yeah. when I fell in love with me again. When I just yes. let that go, because that hair again, it was it was a constant reminding me. And I would tell people, I lose this analogy as being in a in a bad marriage. Mm-hmm. You, you've been with this person for so long; this all you know, and but yet you're not happy, but you're afraid to let go because it's all you ever knew. My own right. hair is all I ever knew. So it wasn't until I got a divorce that I was able to love me, because when I was you know married and miserable. You know, all I knew, I, I just knew that I was a mother and a wife, mother and a wife. I didn't know who Stacy was. I did not find out who Stacy was until I got divorced, until I let go mm-hmm. of hiding the fun of the week that I found me. Wow. So I'm actually thankful that I lost my hair because had mm-hmm. not, who knows, you know what I'm saying? I think I'm a much happier me now that I don't have my hair. Yes, yes. You know what? It frees you. I remember yes. I was working in a salon, um, and I, I told you in the beginning, I cut my hair, nothing's wrong with my I have, as people will say, too much hair, which you really can't have, but I have a, I have a lot of hair. And mm-hmm. I had long locks. It was hot. I was tired. I was, you know, going back and forth here and there. And I just said, okay, I am done. This has been a wonderful learning experience. A beautiful transition in my life is about to take place, and nobody could believe it. And I just, you know, I went in and asked the barbers, Bob, please cut my hair. And they were like, you're not going to cut your hair. (laughs) And I said, no, yeah, I'm ready. And they were like, you're not cutting because my hair was mid-back. They were like, no, you're not going to cut your hair. I said, okay, if you don't cut it, I'll cut it. And I just lifted up all of these locks in the front of my hair and just shaved them off, and they just almost died. (laughs) And, you know, when you are ready, whether it's by choice or whether it's 
uh, unfortunately, a disorder or disease by, by force that will cause us to lose hair. What it did for me individually, and then I'll tell you what it did for me as a stylist when I work with cancer patients, when I work with alopecia um, clients, but what it did for me was allow me to see my face, Mm-hmm. I could not hide behind my hair. I could not identify myself with my hairstyle. I could only see Jazzy. So mm-hmm. whoever I was, if I didn't know me before, I had to find out who I was. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and even to even all the way up until now, it still makes me a little bit more transparent every day because I have to look at myself. And that mm-hmm. you either gonna hate yourself with the bald head because you know you can be angry. I had I worked in North Carolina for years, which which is where I'm from, and I worked very close to uh, the hospital where a lot of cancer patients would come in after going to radiation, getting radiation treatments, and they would come in and there would be that last little bit of hair, and they would say just cut it off because I'm losing it in handfuls. And, mm-hmm. you know, it would be many times that we cried together because I'm just that kind of emotional girl. And we would cry yeah. together, and I would say, sweetheart, let me tell you something. Your hair is not your identification. It can <laughs> be, it can be, but it is not who you are. It's an mm-hmm. element of who you are, but it's not who you are. And so you have to learn how, like you said, to love you, but it is a freedom to rock a bald head. And I'm going to tell you, it's a freedom that you have, and people will say, wow, you have such a pretty head, you can wear that. No, your attitude makes you wear yes, balls. Absolutely. It has and that's what I tell to do women. with anything. Absolutely. That's why I, when we mentor or talk to other women, you know, I tell them, that's that's what I say all the time. I say, you know, you don't you worry about a man being attracted to you because you don't mm-hmm. have long hair. Let me tell you what a man is attracted to. They're attracted to a woman that can hold a stimulating conversation that is company. Yes. That is mm-hmm. what a man is, yeah. you know, I think yeah. so a man, a man gravitates to, to, to confidence. You can be an average-looking woman mm-hmm. and be in a room full of, do, not you know, gorgeous women because, believe it or not, what they're going to say, a lot of gorgeous women, I'm not going to say a lot, there are some gorgeous women who have uh-huh. the same issues. They do. Mm-hmm. And if the you majority. come in there with confidence, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Baby, you'd be average. You'd be one hundred. She put it's because of the confidence, and that's what I teach. Yes. You know, teach, that's what I try to you know empower women and let them know. It's you're you have to love yourself first before you can even receive love. If you that's don't it. love you entirely, not partially, but entirely, you're not going to receive that love that you want first mm-hmm. and foremost. And then exactly. love will come. Well, we definitely salute you and. Sisters with Alopecia, we salute all of the doctors and the programs who, you know, really give that support, not just their technical knowledge, but they give support for women and men that are um, bald and or losing their hair and teaching yes. how to have self and love um, acceptance. It's crucial. It's crucial because I remember having an 11-year-old uh, little girl in my chair and, you know, people don't realize, oh, you're just a hairstylist. No, if it, if I'm not careful about what I stay and do in that chair, I'm affecting somebody's life. It's just that serious. And that's how I took my job. It was just that serious. But this 11-year-old little girl was so devastated that her hair had started falling out, and she was devastated because she thought her parents were going to divorce because their business had started to suffer. And so she she started losing her hair from stress. And she was 11 years old, long, long hair, and and so her hair started falling out a handful. So whether young or whether old, um, older, I won't even say old. I'm I'm really trying to get out of the old word. I think we should never have created that word. I don't think we should have created that word. (laughs) We don't even need to say you just, this or that, <laughs> that's what I'm saying, you're this or that. But <laughs> it doesn't matter where you are in life, where, wherever space or place you are in life, it, it doesn't matter. If you can just look in the mirror and love you, if you are blind, Absolutely. if you could just touch yourself and know that you have movement of your hands, then guess what? You're beautiful. You're beautiful, period. It doesn't matter what goes on on the outside of you. As long as your inside looks good, meaning your thought process, you are absolutely beautiful. 
beautiful. And that's yeah. really, really where my the Yes, My Ball, this beautiful campaign is, it, it really is what it's about, that no matter where you are in life, your ball really can represent beauty, but you have to give people beauty for them to see the beauty. Absolutely. Sometimes they can't see it. And mm-hmm. so I salute all of the heroes and sheroes that are rocking, rocking a bald head, a bald eyebrow, a bald body, you know, hair and all that. Because one of my brothers said one day his hair just started falling out everywhere. He said, I lost hair everywhere. <laughs> I was like, everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. And so that was even <laughs> something that I had to find out that, uh, yeah, it can affect all of the body parts of hair. So for those of us that are rocking the ball head, I really salute us and, and give us high fives for all of our cosmetologists that are really just doing an awesome job of educating from that side of the chair. Like I said, Brittany over at Rick's Cuts and Styles, who does hair and makeup, she just she's phenomenal. That whole team of people are doing such a good job. Our students that are in school um, learning all about disease disorder and hairstyles and nails, salute you, salute you when you follow your basics and you can give your customers beyond the hairstyle but also some education, then you might save a life. It may be something that's far beyond just um, alopecia. So help them by educating them, by learning, and and giving them the basics. Yes. You know, but... I really, Stacey, you just don't even know. I really, really appreciate you so, so much. For Dawn, all of my cancer survivors, Dawn just did her last radiation treatment. I know Dawn, yes. You know Dawn. Dawn did her last radiation treatment a few weeks ago. She was a former cheerleader. She was supposed to be on the show tonight, but she's a busy little bee, and thank God she can't be in this. This is not the Dawn that I was thinking. I'm sorry. It doesn't ahead. matter. We love that Dawn, too. All yes. of the Dawns that have had cancer and survived, yes. we love all of you. <laughs> We love all of you. Absolutely. We love our survivors, yeah. Yeah. We love our survivors that are now thriving and rocking a bald head, hair growing back. We love Kendra, who is, I don't know if you've been following us, um, Stacey, but we are giving away a dream wedding at the Bearheads Dream Wedding Expo. Um, We're giving away a dream wedding to a cancer survivor who is going to rock a bald head during her wedding. Hey. Um, yep, because we want, we really do want society to recognize the bald is beautiful. It Absolutely. Is. So we it crowned is. our phenomenal bald beauty, a little nine-year-old. We did that back in uh, t- um, December 2013. She's our, our first, we're gonna, we do it every year now, but, um, but she's um, our 2013 name is Tiffany Bright, out of Garland, Texas, and she is such a bright child now, you know, from beginning. She lost her husband in March of last year, and Uh she had a hard uh time dealing with it. But you should see this baby now. She's bold and beautiful, and at school she doesn't hide it anymore. I just oh, you can't help but to fall in love with her. Yes, so bold. That's it. And that's what. Oh yeah, is that the young girl? That's the young girl, Jazzy. I think that we were just connecting with her on Facebook. On the page, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, we heard about her. I think she's like 10 or 11 or something like that. She's nine. Oh, my gosh, she's so beautiful. She really is Mm -hmm. absolutely beautiful. See, this is what it's all about. Um, Audience, listeners, this is what it's all about. When you can use your challenge, I won't say your problem, because the problem is only what you make it. When you can use your challenge, whatever that challenge is, and we we happen to be talking about baldness, when you can use it not only to get you to a better place, but to use it to empower someone else, you've done your job for the day. You've done your job for the day, and your goal, I think, should be every day, how can I do something better? What can I give not only to myself and my family, but what can I give to someone else? I had a lady tell me one day, I was in the store. This this has been so impactful for me in my life. I was in the store. I was kind of in my own zone. I wanted to read. I was on break, went to a grocery store, and just had one of their little meals and the little fresh salad. So I was sitting outside. It was a beautiful day. And I just kind of didn't want to be bothered. I do a lot of outreach and a lot of stuff, so that was my quiet time and it was my space. And this lady kind of came and sat down, and it was some teenagers outside talking, but I had blocked everybody out. And this lady just kind of kept getting closer and closer, and I'm thinking, any other day but today, just this just this moment, I kind of want to ignore the fact that you are even in my space. <laughs> and I kind of looked up and smiled this 
at the time it was really a pretentious smile, like I'm going to smile at you, but I really don't want to be bothered. That was my thoughts, but I didn't give her that. And a few minutes passed, and she looked at me, and she said, I just want you to know to keep smiling. You don't know how it has blessed me today. Oh. Do you know how small I felt? <laughs> because oh, what? Even, though, even though it was a compliment, it mm-hmm. reminded me thought, yeah. that every single day that all that I do throughout the day, I should be mindful and grateful because you don't know somebody's circumstance. Mm-hmm. You don't know somebody's story. So we don't know how walking around being bald has empowered a nine-year-old. We don't know unless we are conscious about it. So, again, I salute you. I salute all of the organizations um, that have really just taken this by the um, spearheaded it so that we can get this information out so people will understand what alopecia is and what it is not. So once yeah. again, give everybody your contact so that they can follow you. And we definitely, you know, with, with what I'm doing, hopefully we get an opportunity to do some things together um, through this next year. I know we're doing some aggressive things to, you know, make this well known. So give us your information one more time. Our website is www.sistersLivingWithAlopecia.com. We can also be um, found on Facebook as Sisters Living With Alopecia. And please um, visit and like us. We greatly appreciate it. And we're also on <laughs> Twitter, which is at SLWA underscore Inc. Dot. You got it? Okay, so are, are you um, are you actually a nonprofit organization as well? We are. We are nonprofit. Yes, we are nonprofit. I um, love it. Yes. It's, okay, it's, so you it's, said this like is living with alopecia. Is it dot com or dot org? Dot com. Sisters living with alopecia. Dot com. Okay. okay. Just want to make sure I was being correct. And for all of you that are are listening, or I mean, all of you that went on Facebook. I want you to know that Stacy is beautiful. Let's just go ahead and say it. She is. So everybody else, they have just been in awe of your beauty. Oh, well, thank you, guys. She I'm is sorry. beautiful. <laughs> Appreciate that. Appreciate I tell people just like you, Jazzy, we have that in common. I'm such a giver. I'm happy when I can put a smile on someone's yes. face. Yeah. I remember being, um, you know, people with what is your purpose? I didn't know what my purpose was until mm-hmm. I lost alopecia. And I love being able to put a smile on somebody's face and mm-hmm. power women. Oh, that is, mm-hmm. that is, I love it. That yeah, really it's nothing happen. like it. It's absolutely nothing like it. Um, it. It just, it's a joy. When, now you completely understand when they say it's better to give than to receive. Absolutely. Because it, it just opens your heart. It's so... It, it It's just nothing like it. I mean, words really escape you when you're able to do that. It's just such a joy. So, again, anytime, anytime you can Facebook, hey, Jazz, I want to come on the show, no problem. Come right back on. We can talk about things that are, are going on. The um, video is going to be May what? Say it again. Or is it May that you're doing that? Or was April. it Dr. Z that you're doing the video, the wig video? It's going to be April, April 5th. We, we're having a uh, Women's Summit, our second annual Women's Summit, where we celebrate every woman. Every mm-hmm. woman is beautiful. Um, so that evening, um, the ladies, um, women, and the children that have alopecia, we're going to have like a pajama jam. I love and it. And we ask them to bring their wigs, you know, the wigs that they don't like anymore, mm-hmm. whatever, mm-hmm. bring their wigs. And we're going to do like a mini, you know, like a little, you know, that's some fancy, I love so like it. a little video to happy, letting everybody know we're happy as we are shaking the wigs, you know, dancing with the wigs, flinging it around. We're just going to be <laughs> silly about it. So I'm excited about that. Okay, I'm going to send you my information. Definitely send that to me so I can do a selfie or maybe I can Skype in or something and, and we can get it in together. I need to get some new pajamas and get me a wig to swing around because, girl, <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. Thank you so, so, be. so super much. We're going to go out on, on the happy song because I think it's just appropriate. I normally go out on Superman because Black Coffee is my man in South Africa. Love you, Black Coffee, but we're going out on for real tonight. <laughs> Stacey, thanks right, well, so much. Thank you guys for the opportunity. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye, darling. 
Even and producer, it's to back the to you. bare truth. I'm trying to tell you the bare truth. Love, life, sex, and flowers with Miss Joyce Jazzy Jones. We are always, always so appreciative of our listeners. Uh, once this broadcast complete, you can archive our show at loudmouthradio.com. It'll also download and stream automatically to Stitcher Radio, so you can download the app and pull us up. And if you have the beautiful car dashboard app of Stitcher, you should be able to plug in right through your car dashboard as well as iTunes and on blogtalkradio.com slash loudmouthradio. Now, Jazz, I think um, I think tonight has been magnificent. We did not expect Dr. Z to come in and just over overpower our beautiful minds of a gift of sharing his story <laughs> from a medical doctor to a filmmaker. Great. Yes. I yes. am so inspired. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, it's nothing we can't do. Not one thing. Absolutely. That's why I say make up your mind and just do it. So I intend I have made my list uh, of Dr. Z's films. I'm going to check these out. And definitely, um, if you guys have an opportunity, we've already tweeted out um, he has a House of Temptation independent film that he is looking to raise $100,000 on Indiegogo. I'm so proud mm-hmm. of him. Mm-hmm. And uh, that film was filmed, I, I believe, out of San Francisco, which is where he's based out of. And we have that link on our Twitter. So definitely connect with us at Loudmouth, L-O-U-D-D-M-O-U-T-H. Follow us. And you'll be able to get all this information we've shared um, thank you so much, Stacey, for joining us uh, tonight. Yes. Um, this mm-hmm. is Living with Alopecia um, and, and also talking about hair loss and how you can turn something that some people find to be shamed and, and turn it into empowerment. And it was amazing exactly. how Dr. Z talked about how his films have always been dedicated to show empowerment. Yes. Uh, Isn't it especially it's amazing. coming. Yeah, especially coming from a country like Pakistan, Pakistan, where it's very familiar for uh, the culture to have arranged marriages and how people are really shifting gears from uh, being, you know, restricted. So, right. you know, so great, great how blessed calling. are we? Yeah. I know, right? Yeah. So how blessed <laughs> are we to have um, someone so significant to take the time to, to join in with us and, and understand the, the empowerment of connection? So. And let, uh, and let me tell you, let yeah. me tell you, let me interrupt you really quickly. What's so funny is every, you know, we always end the show with, with the flower. And so for the show tonight, the peona is the um, flower that I chose. But every single time, I'm telling you, it has never failed yet that every time I choose a flower, I always try to pick one that, of course, you know, that um, the show is called The Bare Truth, Love, Life, Sex, and Flowers just because I love them um, with Jazzy Jones. But the reason I picked that flower is because it's so beautiful, as the, I think they all are. But I always try to get a flower that has a meaning of the show. And so it's so funny that if you go and look at the history of the peonia, um, if I'm, you know I never pronounce stuff right, but it's just beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's so sad. I'm really going to get a florist that just, tells me how to pronounce stuff but you know it's a beautiful pink flower hopefully we have that posted i did it i know i did it on our oh, we'll share page it for you. and we can mm-hmm. share that but it comes from a healing root of the greek gods of healing so you know you can look that up and i thought it was so appropriate that we were talking about healing and empowerment and then I picked that flower. So that's our flower for the evening. They are absolutely gorgeous, come in so many multicolors. So pick a flower tonight. Pick a flower every day, something that gives you a reason to smile. They will always brighten your day no matter where you are. I know people don't always love the same type of flowers, but I have a book of 345,000 flowers, so I will never be lost without a flower. <laughs> Not Why did I ever. do it? <laughs> <laughs> Never, ever, ever. So what an incredible show. What an incredible uh, guest um, that we had to talk about her own experience. And, of course, Dr. V is just, yeah, he's our new best friend. And, again, once again, we want to shout out to our new correspondent, Valerie Vi, who is going to be on tomorrow night on the Legal Voice here at uh, Loudmouth Radio Network. Um, we are so proud to have her to be joining us. And let me tell you, it was so hard for me not to talk about some of the topics that are going to be on that show tomorrow because, you know, on my show, I, I really have no shame to jump right in. I don't. So 
to say some of that legal social activism that I have um, to call in on on Val's show tomorrow. I cannot wait to talk with uh, Council Valerie by tomorrow on her show. We want to also shout out to our new photographer team member who took our new pictures. Yes, I mean, Tiffany Powell. Oh yes, she did the thing. She did the thing and made yes. us look yes, as beautiful did. as I think we all are. But she really brought out the best in us, and she's going to be joining us. So when you see all of these shots all over the place, we, we're going to give photos to you know, our select producer. What are you doing? You're killing me. You're killing me. Uh, I don't know. Um, I apologize. Go ahead. <laughs> um, but we, we want to give shouts out to her because she did an awesome job. So we do have other photographers that work with us as well um, in between some of the ones that we do. But we, we are so grateful to have her to be joining us um, in print as well as on the website. And kudos and shouts out again to Miss Brittany who did such a wonderful job on our makeup. You're going to see some of those things. I'm telling you, Loud Mouth Radio is all over the place. We just do pop-ups everywhere. And Brittany know, did right? a great, great, great job for a photo shoot that we had this past weekend. And she is over there with a team of barbers and, and stylists at Rick's Cut. At Rick's Styles and Cuts, family. right off of Camerton Road. Yeah. Thank you so right much, Camerton Road. She, so, she had us hooked up. What, she had that us was, hooked um, up. Shoot, that was shoot three out of, yeah. That was we, the third shoot, yes. So I thank was going to say three out of three, but that is. Right. <laughs> yeah, that was like literally yeah the third the third uh, photo shoot of the week. Um, and, and make sure you guys follow Tiffany M Powell on Twitter and Instagram, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. she's at Powell.pix on Facebook. Um, so definitely, um, we just want to definitely give credit where credit is due. Um, yes. for, as far as uh, this week, we're very excited. Like I said, this is our season opener, and. Um, Jazzy, you know I cannot resist. I love our new season announcement, so I'm gonna play it right now. I just can't help oh but do it. Somebody help me! Help me! <laughs> Have you heard? No. What's going on? <laughs> Loudmouth Radio is getting ready to start this season back March 4, 2014. Really? I hadn't. I, I didn't know. Well, tune in. Starting March 4, 2014, Loudmouth Radio Network is coming back on with new shows, new content, special guests, features, and things you would not want to miss. Great media partners and content that you will just lose your head over. Remember, <laughs> LoudmouthRadio.com. I don't know where that came from, but it worked. That is the funniest <laughs> thing. I'm telling you, our little spoil boy who, who joins our show will be joining us uh, throughout the year. Periodically. Periodically, you guys are going to be introduced to Spool Boy, and oh my God, what a hoot! So, thank you, Spool Boy, for for announcing <laughs> that for us. Um, I don't know, maybe we should have some some guest callers to announce some of our uh, our commercials for us. I think it is. I laugh every time, every time I hear that. But it is it's good information. So we we're grateful. <laughs> I know, right? I want to say, um, at this point, guys, you can go ahead and make your closing remarks, but definitely tune in tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m., What's on Your Mind, Atlanta kicks off as our pre-shows for each of our premium shows that kick off at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you do not have the ability to catch our shows live, you can always archive them. Mm-hmm. And if you mm-hmm. will... Jazz, your closing remarks, and we'll go ahead and conclude tonight's show. And definitely tune in for the legal voice with Attorney Valerie by tomorrow night. That's going to be a great show. Exactly. I, so I don't, don't forget, Thursday it, night, I'll be on live in the studio with Sonny. Did you say it was my last closing remark or yours? Thank you. Go Thank ahead. you. Love you. Um, nevertheless, no, you you will be on, on Thursday. <laughs> we definitely want to tune in to all of our shows. But, again, guys, um, we are sponsoring tonight's show. I'm so fortunate to be able to. I want everybody to know, yes, I pay my dues as an advertiser. I want you all to know that just because I'm a host on the show does not mean that I do not uh, have to pay dues to uh, advertise. So I'm going to go ahead and plug Bear Heads Dream Wedding Expo this year, June um, 15th, 2014, at the Georgia World Congress Center. We will be giving away a dream wedding for one beautiful Miss Kendra Williams-Jones, and she is just an amazing woman, and her uh, 
fiance, they are just so ready to get all of the beautiful gifts that our sponsors have donated um, to them. So we're just really excited about it. We want you to go ahead and go to Bear Heads, B A R E H E A D S Wedding expo.com you can get your tickets they are still buy one get one free $15 for entry so you can come out if you're getting married if you're thinking about getting married and if you know somebody that's getting married you can come out and help find their dream wedding ideas talk to all of the vendors that are calling weekly daily to sign up so that they can help you make those dreams a reality we have a fantastic um planner that is working with us. We have a couple on our team, but we thank Miss Holly Rodriguez, who is with Life Dreams Wedding and Events, who is doing a fantastic job helping us to put this together. We have so many good, good people on our, our team, and, and if you want to volunteer, you can go to the volunteer page so that you can come on staff and help us to get the word out and help make dreams come true. But if you just want to come and support um, this cancer survivor now thriving um, and watch her get married so that we can cheer her on to success and just see what a beautiful ball bride looks like. You're going to see some of them walk down the runway. Stacey, you are welcome to come and be in the show. We would love to have you as a model in the show. So for information on modeling, information on volunteering, if you want to be a vendor, um, just information on the show as well, remember bareheadsweddingexpo.com. You're able to get all of the information and be able to contest, contact us directly. It's going to be absolutely incredible, and we really do appreciate your time for um, doing that. But I do appreciate you once again for listening to us tonight. We're going to close out and take a little time. No, that's another show. Okay, so really seriously. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? I just yeah, I really what wanted happened? to say that. I really wanted to say that. I wanted to say that TV show slogan so bad, but I won't say it. I will just tell you, join us again back here next Tuesday at 7.30 for What's On Your Mind and then right into the bare truth, Love, Life, Sex, and Flowers with me, Jazzy Jones. Yo, yo, yo.